Hey, hi everyone. My name is Ijaz and I make videos in the JavaScript ecosystem. Today I will demonstrate a project I have built to read the user handwriting from an image and convert it into a digital text. The name of this project is Glyph AI. And let's start with the demo first. So in this project, you can see that uh, we have to upload an image and uh, over here I have written it that it has to be a handwritten text. Uh, we have to upload an image and uh, that image will be processed and we'll get the uh, data whatever it is written in the image so let's start with the first image i have um, picked up three images to show in the demo so i'll pick up the first one so over here, over here you can see it's a small note uh, with a to-do list uh, just three items in this now if i click on process so over here you can see on the right side it has converted uh, the, it was able to read uh, the text from the image and give us back the, te the text. Now the thing is uh, to do this I am using uh, AWS uh, text track service so in that service we can just give the image and the response that we get back is a JSON and we can extract the lines uh, uh, the blocks from the JSON response and extract the text out of it. So what kind of uh, JSON response do we get back from the uh, from the AWS I will go through that as well uh, before that let me show you uh, let me pick up another image now in this image uh, you can see the handwriting is not that I mean it's pretty neat and the image is also clear uh, I'll start I, I'll go with another image yeah in this you can see the handwriting is not that good it's uh, I mean uh, it would take some effort to read it uh, let me see if uh, it can process the text track service can actually understand so here you can see <clears throat> the date is correct then I over here it says I had number of tasks in my plate you can see <clears throat> uh, my I uh, I mean I scratched it but still it was able to read it uh, three bugs when new API feature numerous meetings with proper time management are wrapped up all on time yeah these exclamation marks are missing <clears throat> uh, it's a great day thanks so anyhow it, it has understood kind of everything and uh, uh, yeah another small feature I added was just uh, we can just click on this and it'll copy and we can paste it anywhere we want uh, the last piece of example that I have is this is not actually a handwritten text it is of course a picture from a book uh, the bo name of the book is uh, the lean startup i took up one page from there and i thought let's try uh, how the results would be so if i just click on process so we are sending this image to uh, the text track service and over here i can see that i did get and i did get all the uh, text back uh, the yeah i mean so <clears throat> the amazon text track service actually we can uh, then we can uh, convert the handwriting into text uh, and of course under images or PDFs also we can uh, convert it into text uh, we can in fact ask questions uh, ask queries and uh, we can get responses so <clears throat> in today's project this is the only uh, demo this is the only piece of feature I have implemented but in the upcoming videos I will be uh, using text track to build more projects for doing some kind of automation or uh, of course questioning adding questions or queries so now i'll quickly go over the code to show how exactly this project was built yeah i'll quickly first go over the amazon text track uh, text track uh, their website and then their api reference and then we'll jump into the code so over here you can see uh, that uh, this is the amazon text track website so maybe if you're interested you can go over their website and see what all features it provides so here you can see it just says that automatic, automatically extract printed text handwriting and data from any document so we already saw from the printed text and handwriting we were able to extract the data and uh, uh, for the api reference as uh, yeah for the api as uh, we are calling the api from the aws sdk so uh, in here uh, you can see that they have two topics for actions and data types so actions uh, is what we are interested in and uh, these are there are several actions that uh, this 
uh, service supports so over here you can see it says analyze document analyze expense analyze id detect document text and many other so uh, actions so the top four are uh, synchronous services and the remaining are asynchronous so whenever you use any of the remaining services so uh, you will not get the response uh, back right away so if i open this you can see it returns a job id so whenever we submit a request uh, whenever we uh, use this service or use this action so we get back a job id and whenever the the operation finishes uh, we will get a notification from the amazon sns topic sms service uh, the action that we will be using uh, uh, today for that i have used for the demo is uh, detect detect document text so in this uh, you can see it is uh, synchronous and we can pass uh, the images we can also pass pdfs and it will detect the text and it will return the block types uh, blocks and uh, lines a uh, lot of things in the json format and yeah the request syntax that it has to be so uh, in this demo we are not using s3 so uh, this part is not required but yeah if you are using if you are uploading the file to s3 bucket then uh, this part is not required you can directly give the bucket name and everything uh, name of the bucket then name of the object and the version and uh, this should be fine to submit the request and uh, yeah the response parameter i will go through uh, the response uh, and I'll, uh, for our example and I'll, I'll explain it in detail so uh, we'll now go to the uh, code part so the project uh, is built in Next.js and I'm using Tailwind CSS for the designing and stuff. And uh, because we're using AWS text track, so I'm using AWS SDK. And uh, formidable serverless because I'm sending a form uh, from the front end. And yeah, that's it. Not many packages that uh, we're using. This is the index file uh, where <coughs> uh, where you can see the uh, basically the ui part so over here you can see the max width i have set as 5xl and then uh, on the left side i mean it has basically it's a grid with two columns and over here you can see the left part has the file upload component and whatever image that we upload uh, that image i'm just quickly showing it here and then on the right side uh, this is the of course the right column second column and uh, whatever text that we get back I'm just displaying it here and uh, this is one copy button that uh, you can click and it will copy to the clipboard now <clears throat> uh, I yeah let me quickly go over the file upload feature first so if I come here so here you can see that in the input uh, which is of type file this is the handle file change uh, function and uh, yeah once uh, once whenever we select a file so i'm restricting uh, the file to be an image so that is why uh, whenever we click on the choose file so we see only the image file which are selectable and then uh, this part is for displaying the file on the front end so when, as soon as we select we want the image to be displayed on the screen then <clears throat> once we click on the process button that is uh, the button on the right side of the uh, file upload input type file so once we uh, click on process so you can see that i'm using form data and uh, we're making a call to api process we're making a post call and once we get a response in the response i am basically sending a response with uh, each line of the uh, image as a item of an array so the response is a json response with a response key and the value of response is an array with each item of the array as individual line of the image and then <clears throat> uh, we have this stop processing and everything so and if there is an error so we are just using a uh, hot toast to uh, react hot toast to show the error response and uh, maybe i'll quickly go over the clip uh, sorry uh, clipboard part for the copy text also because on click over here you can see i'm just using navigator.clipboard.writetext 
uh, <clears throat> this IEC was uh, like in can I use you can check if we can use uh, I mean uh, for the navigator.clipboard for the browser support I saw it was supported in <clears throat> maximum browser so maybe this could be fine but yeah for older browsers maybe we have to go with some package or something uh, <clears throat> but yeah this is you can see it's very simple very easy and quick now uh, the next part is the API part so <clears throat> over here you can see that once the request comes uh, for the API slash process so we have we're using formidable so this we're using to parse the form and we have parsed the form and we are reading the file so this is the image now this over here is uh, something we have to understand the text track service uh, in the text track service we can pass an object from an s3 bucket so if you instead of directly passing the file to extract service we can first upload the file in s3 bucket and maybe give that object to text track even that is fine but over here we are not using s3 we are directly giving but in the upcoming projects uh, videos i will show how we can use s3 as well so in this one over here you can see this is how it has to be the params that we have to, we will be passing to text track service it should have document and bytes and then image so this image is what we are reading so this is the only it's very simple so this is the only parameter that we have to pass and oh yeah, I'm saying text track dot detect document text and give the params and uh, we are using promiseify that is because we are using await now from where did this text track come so over here uh, there's a file aws services so here you can see that i'm doing the configuration with aws sdk so aws config dot update over here we are uh, putting the region access key access id which has to be inside the uh, env dot local so this is the example so over here you should have these access ids all these ids and region so once we have put it in place and the, from the environment variable we can pick all these values and then uh, we are creating uh, text track and we are exporting from here which we are using in the uh, in the api route and text track has many other uh, methods this is one of them uh, i will provide a link for the aws extract in the description so you can see that uh, there are many other features that we can use from text track now <clears throat> what is the response that we get back so i'll quickly go over the response that once we pass let's say the to-do list that we had so if we pass it so this is the response that we get from text track so where you can see that <clears throat> this is the document metadata so it says there's only one page because we had only one image then this is all the blocks so it's a it's an array and if you see so that's it i mean we have a document metadata then blocks and this is i think text some version it's okay we will not we'll just ignore it now inside the blocks if we see <clears throat> there's a block type of page and uh, so it's uh, and it's giving a bounding box as well so just in case if you want to create a box around this so uh, we can use it now in this page it says it has four child okay so <clears throat> and uh, uh, we'll come to it later now if i come here in the next block this is a line now this line has a text which says to do so this is what we are extracting and it says it has a confidence level of 98 it's a very high confidence and it has a bounding box so we can use this and we can create a box around to do just in case if you want to do something uh, like identifying and highlighting the text on the image so we can make use of bounding box dimensions to create a rectangle or square next is <clears throat> again this has a relation it has a relationship and it has two two ids <clears throat> now another block type is again of line so we already saw for line now this is also for a line now this is also for a line now this <clears throat> another block type is of word text type is handwriting that's fine <clears throat> but this is for the word to so now, now if we come back to our block type of line you can see text is to do and it has two ids two relations so if i just copy this and if i try to find it so you can see the id this id is for the text to do for the text to so basically 
<coughs> the to do has two ids that is one is for to and one is for do so uh, I, I hope you got it because there is another word to uh, word do which again has an id so this is how it is uh, putting a relationship but we don't have to use it it is just for the understanding that i was trying to show it uh, so in my code uh, you can see what i'm doing is i'm extracting all the blocks then from the blocks i'm filtering out all the lines so all the block type which has line that's what i'm picking up and then from each line i'm extracting the text and i'm putting it in an array and then i'm just sending it back so that's it uh, that's all uh, i'm doing uh, in order to get the text from the image <clears throat> and then once the response is back uh, in the process api so over here you can see i have put it in the set data array and if i come here uh, yeah so data array is here and in order to put it uh, to show it what i'm doing is i'm just i'm just iterating through each item of the array and i'm just putting it as it is but yeah if you are interested maybe you can style it or anything that you want we can do it okay so i so i think this is all from this project and uh, uh, i will uh, be creating another project where i have uh, we will be using text track to automate few tasks and uh, most probably in the next video i'll show how to do it thank you for your time and if you like the video please like and uh, subscribe to the channel thank you